Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. As you can see from the title, today we are going to be going over products that are actually worth their value, okay? Products that you are not going to regret that you purchased, products that have been working for me for months, products that I highly, highly recommend, stuff that I don't regret spending money on. That's what we're going over today. Stuff that I've been grabbing over and over and over again and just has really worked out for me. So. Let's get right into it. We're gonna do an entire face of stuff that's actually worth your money. Now, first things first, the brows. I always take care of the brows before anything else. I just find it a lot easier. Um, and you guys know, this is my like ultimate favorite duo. They're inexpensive, so they're definitely worth the bucks that you spend on them. And they're gonna last you. Not only that, but the brow pen, I just love what it does around the areas that I don't have as many hairs in around my sparse areas. I really like how this fills them in. It does take a little bit of time to get used to it but once you have it down it's super easy it doesn't take any time at all and it really just enhances your brows so if you're someone like me who has very minimal brows and you're just looking for that one product that's going to help fill them in minimal effort this is it this is definitely it with this pen i can go either really light and natural or i can fill them in really well and go really bold with it. So you see, especially out here, I'm missing some brow hairs and this, just like one quick little flick. Now it looks like I have brow hairs. Now after I'm done with the pen, I'll usually go back with the spoolie end of the ultra fine brow pencil and just blend, fuse everything together, if you will. Kind of soften all of those brow strokes. And then I go back in with the pencil side and just kind of fill in the rest just a little bit very very light handed with it and then to make sure that the brows aren't going anywhere and that they stay locked and in place i go in with the brow glue also from nyx this one's in the shade dark brown and just lightly run that through the brows now let's move on to the eyes. I think you guys already know because I grab this quite often, but this is the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion. This one is their anti-aging formula. I really love how this preps the eyes. It preps the lids before going in with eyeshadow application. It really does make the eyeshadows last. Everything goes on a lot smoother, a lot more pigmented, a lot, just, a lot more intense, and it makes things a little bit easier it makes your eyeshadows last all day long. It doesn't matter how much you're sweating. It doesn't matter how much humidity you put your eyeshadows through. This will hold them in place. Next, eyeshadows. This has been my go-to palette for a while now. And it is my go-to palette for two reasons. Not only are the shades super blendable, very, very flattering, but you get everything in just one little palette. Uh, this is the Natasha Denona Glam Face Palette. Now she has two. She has this light version and then there's a dark version. I own both, but the dark one, I usually bring that one out or I've been, I use it a lot during like the winter, fall months, but now that we're in the springtime, summertime, I try to keep the looks a little bit more toned down and I focus more so on the skin than I do on my eyes or like the intensity of my lip colors. This is perfect for an every day. You've got everything that you need. I mean, you've got these two colors, which I use all of the time. They're deep enough and pigmented enough to where they show up on my eyelid. But let's say that you are of a deeper complexion. You do have the option of the dark one and those shades will definitely show on your eyelid and they'll still look pretty nice and subtle just depending on how much you apply. These two I use all of the time. I mix them together. These, This goes underneath the eye like the lower lash line all of the time. And if I ever wanna intensify a little bit, add a little bit of dimension, that's when I'll bring in the deepest shade. These two I also really love, super, super pigmented. I mean, just look at this. Here's one and two they're super shimmery now it, it 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 is a little bit glittery or it seems that way and you do get a little bit of fallout that's the only thing that i don't really like about these shimmers because they are so soft and buttery that they sometimes end up underneath the eye but 
it's a great palette nonetheless. Now these two up here, this one's a blush, this one's a highlighter. The blush is a cream blush and it is so beautiful. Where do I put it? I'll put it right here. Like so subtle, but still like you see it. And I love the fact that it's a cream because I just have more control over where I'm placing it. And it just looks so like I said, so subtle and so just beautiful on the skin. So I'm gonna start off by mixing the shade that's supposed to be in the crease and the shade that's supposed to be in the transition. That's another thing. That's how she has them listed under here. So you have your inner corner shade, transition shade, crease shade, outer corner, and your smoke shade right there. Makes it super, super easy to know exactly where to place each individual eyeshadow. I'm just gonna apply it right here right under the crease, like where my eye naturally creases. And I'm using BK Beauty's brush number 206. I love it, it's super fluffy and it's great for blending and applying eyeshadows, especially matte ones. And then I'm gonna go back with the transition shade, this really beautiful light pink shade, which does show up on my lid, as you will see here. It's very, very, very subtle, but I love the way that it looks. Then I'll take both shades, just a little bit of the two and place it right here in the middle to fuse everything together. So now that we're done with the lids, let's move on to the eyes, like the lash line. I love to tight line my lash line. When you tight line, it just gives the appearance of a thicker lash line, and therefore it adds a little bit of volume to the lashes. It allows your lashes to truly look enhanced without adding falsies. So we are going to be taking the Rare Beauty Perfect Strokes Matte Liquid Liner. I really love how sharp this is, how black this is, how intense this is, and how this wears right up against the lashes. So what I do is I just press the eyeliner under the eye. And you don't have to do this with a liquid liner. You could do this with a pencil, like an eyeliner pencil. Gel eyeliner pencils work best. And look at the difference. Like, this lash line looks a bit thicker than this one by simply applying a little bit of a liner underneath the lashes. For lashes, I always like to combine two different formulas in order to get the most out of the lashes that I have. I really don't like bothering with false lashes on most days just simply because I don't always have the time. Sometimes they end up straight, sometimes they're two different angles, sometimes they're a little bit crooked or they're just not going on right or they end up making my eyes watery, like super watery. And so for the most part, I opt for mascara and I usually use two different formulas because you get the most out of your lashes when you use two different formulas together. I do all sorts of different combinations. Like I really like this mascara that I just recently purchased and tried here on my channel. This is the highly rated lash, lash extensions mascara from Milani. It's such a good mascara. It truly like extends your lashes to lengths that you could not imagine, but it is kind of messy. It is a little messy. I always end up getting this on my lid. I always end up getting this like around the eye in some way, shape or form. And so for that reason, I love it, but I don't always use it. I don't always reach for it. Other mascaras that I really love, um, the Tarte Man Eater Mascara, one of my top like all time favorite mascaras. The Ilia mascara, this is the fullest volumizing mascara, also a really, really good one. And from Patrick Ta, the Four Eyes Major Volume Mascara, also really, really good. And I like to, you know, mix these different combinations all of the time. For today though, I think I'm gonna go with these two, the Ilia and the Patrick Ta. So we're gonna start with the Patrick Ta, and just of course, base, start at the base and then wiggle, wiggle up. I love that these turn my lashes into like nice, full, wispy lashes, right? And the next coat is gonna be the Ilia Mascara. This is gonna just enhance the volume a bit more. 
For the face, I've been grabbing the Set the Stage Primer from Lawless. They recently sent this to me along with their powder foundation and together, they are a match made in heaven, okay? A match made in heaven. I don't apply a lot, don't overdo it, because with this one, I feel like if you over, I think with any primer, right? You overdo it, you're gonna get the opposite effect of what you want. I love the way that this smells. It smells like skincare. I love how hydrating this is because it's hydrating, but not to the point where it's going to like shift your makeup around or things are going to start to break up and just look nasty. At least I've never had that experience with it. And I always, always bring this particular primer up to the under eye area just a little bit to help it with hydration, you know? I do apply like my skincare and I make sure that that is, the under eye area is like prepped before I go in with concealer and whatnot. But this just has been, uh, it's been working really well for me. So now that we have that onto the face, I think you guys know what color corrector I'm gonna go with. Of course, the Smashbox and the Becca under eye brightening corrector in the shade medium. This is my go-to, one of my go-tos. I do have a few now, um, but this, how can, you know, I've gone back to this year after year after year. Even though I think that the formula may have changed slightly when Smashbox acquired this product, um, it still works really well. It still does such an amazing job underneath the eye area. It's nice and emollient, it's hydrating. It gives you the perfect amount of neutralization underneath the eyes before you go in with either your foundation or a concealer. It just looks really nice and it works really, really well with some of my more drying concealers, if you will. I've used this for literal years and uh, I'll continue to use it. Hopefully they never discontinue it, but if it ever gets discontinued, I think that's when I'll stop. Or if they really change the formula completely, then of course, that's when I'll stop using this corrector. But in the meantime, it is absolutely one of my favorite correctors, and I think it is definitely worth your money. So now that we've neutralized the under eye area, let's go into concealer. Since I'm using a liquid concealer and a powder foundation, I wanna make sure that I apply the concealer first and then go in with the foundation. Now you guys should not be surprised by this because I think I've been talking about this concealer since the day I reviewed it. This is the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer. I use the shade Sugar Biscuit. I absolutely love this concealer. I love it a lot. I really love it paired with the Becca Corrector or the Smashbox and Becca Corrector. And I also really like to set it with my Oma Beauty Trippin' Smooth Setting Powder. Those three together, I mean, it's a match made in heaven. And I just apply a little bit right there and a little bit right there. And I'm just gonna take a blending brush and that is what I'm gonna use to blend this concealer out underneath the eyes. Just like that, you don't need a lot. It conceals so, so well. I just love this concealer so much. And I always drag it down into my cheek when I'm gonna be wearing a powder foundation, just so that it all blends in seamlessly now for foundation, we are going with the Lawless Skin Smoothing Powder Foundation. This truly does smooth your skin. It makes it look like you have a filter on your face. I love what it looks like on the skin and I also really love the way that it wears because it's very, very lightweight. It's like medium to full coverage, like you can build it up. I use the shade medium, I grab it with their multi-use powder brush. This is also a really, really nice brush. It's nice, it's fluffy, but it's still dense. And look at this, okay? Can you tell that I have foundation on my skin. Can you? Here, I'm going to add a little bit more and I'm adding like there's, I'm, I'm definitely adding. You see that? Like how gorgeous is this? You don't need a lot at all. If you prefer powder foundation over liquid foundation, definitely look into this one. 
All right, and now that we are done with the foundation, I am going to set the under eye area. And for the under eye, there is no better powder in my collection than the Trippin' Smooth Setting Powder from Oma Beauty. This is in the shade Light. I take a little bit of it like that, and then I just, so that I'm not left with a ton of powder on the little powder puff. These are amazing, by the way. You can find them on Amazon. I'll link them down below. I love these little powder puffs because of the shape. That tip gets really into the corner, and it just... It makes everything so much easier. So just taking a little bit of that and setting this concealer in place. It's gonna set it nice and smooth. It's not gonna move around on us at all. It's just going to look really, really nice. Moving on to brightening powder for the under eye area. Sometimes, as you can tell right now, like my eyes, just the under eye area, I want it to look a bit brighter. But because of the shades that I use and the setting powder that I use, sometimes it can look a little bit yellow, you know, which I don't really love. So that's when I bust out my Essence Banana Powder. This is their Brighten Up Powder. I really wish that they would come out with a pressed powder like this, but pink, that would be perfect. So again, taking it with the same powder puff that I've been using underneath the eyes, to shake off the excess although it looks like it grabs a bunch it doesn't grab that much trust me it doesn't and i'm just gonna pat this underneath the eye to help make it look a little bit brighter and a little less yellow so now we're gonna go back in with the natasha denona palette and finish off the eyes once again i'm taking the crease shade and the transition shade and I'm taking them with my E27 Detail Blending Brush, and this is what we're gonna use underneath along the lower lash line. And then of course, a little bit of mascara onto the lower lashes. Now for bronzer, I actually really love two different products, and I, I would say that either one of these you're good with. This one is from One Size. It is their Made for Shade Bronze and Sculpting Trio Palette. This comes with three different shades of bronzer. So you have your cool tone, your warmer tone, and your yellow tone bronzer. Whereas the Patrick Ta, I'm kind of embarrassed to show you guys because I use this so much, it looks disgusting, okay? That's what that looks like. You contour with this shade, you bronze with this shade, and it looks so, so good. Now I do love the Patrick Ta, but since I am wearing a powder foundation, I'm going to opt for the one size today. So I'm gonna take my powder sculpt brush. This is the F44 from Sigma. Look how cool that is, just the angle. I use it like this to get right here for the contour, and then you can use it flat like this for blush or bronzer or whatever. So I'm gonna start off with a contouring shade, which is the one all the way at the bottom. Run that back and forth here right above the hollow of the cheek. I don't wanna do it right at the hollow because that is just, it's not gonna give me that lifted appearance that I'm after. So you wanna do it right above it and blend upward. And then I'm gonna take the second shade, the more of a bronzing shade, and I'm gonna apply it on the flat side of the brush. And this is what I'll take going up to the temple. This is what's gonna deliver that like sun-kissed look along the sides of the face. Now for the cheeks, this Bare Minerals Blonzer, girl, this is so, so good. It looks beautiful. It's supposed to be a blush and a bronzer all in one. This one's in the shade Kiss of Copper. I really love it on you know, deeper complexions, medium complexions. I really like the way that it looks. I have a hard time finding blushes that go with everything. And I swear to you, because this is a blush and a bronzer in one, it goes with everything. At least, at least I think so. At least I'd like to think so. Every single time I wear it, like it never looks off with any kind of eye look or any kind of lipstick that I'm wearing for the day. So I'm just gonna concentrate this right above the bronzer. I'm not going to go too crazy with it because I already applied bronzer, so we already have quite a bit of color, but I just want to show you guys how subtle and how beautiful this shade looks on the skin. Look at that. I mean, 
I love it. All right, and last but not least, the lips. This was a hard one for me because I, I'm like, okay, I don't want to recommend too much and overwhelm you guys, but I definitely want to recommend things that I know work, stuff that I know looks great, and stuff that works really well on my lips. My lips are quite special, okay? They're very high maintenance, okay? I just typically, I have a lot of lines. I have a lot of texture on the lips. They tend to get dry. Not everything looks great on them because I do have texture and excessive lines along the lips. And so, you know, not everything works for me, but when something does, I'm like, I gotta get every shade. I've gotta get every single tone. It gets crazy. But I've narrowed it down for this particular look to one lip liner and one like lipstick, liquid lipstick, you know what I mean. Just lip product. The lip liner that I'm going with is this one from Too Faced. Oh my gosh, is it pigmented? Waterproof, featherproof, long wear lip liner in the shade Badass. Oh, I love it. I love this shade. I love the formula. It's just so smooth. I mean, look. I'll fill in the lips. You can't see through it. You just, it's so good, guys. It is so good. You see that? It is so pigmented and it's so smooth. I love wearing it either underneath a lipstick or on its own underneath a gloss. That works really well too. But for today, I'm going with pretty much my most favorite lipstick of all time, okay? These are from Mario, Makeup by Mario. These are his Ultra Suede Cozy Lip Creams. So they're not a liquid lipstick. They're not a lipstick. They're like somewhere in between. They're nice and whipped and super hydrated. They're matte, but not to the point where your lips look like they really lack moisture. <laughs> they're not that matte. They're actually very comfortable, very flexible. They are not transfer proof. So, you know, a bit of a downer, but they're super comfortable and they look so, so nice. This is my favorite shade from the lip creams. This is Nude Suede. It's like a pinky brown. It looks so good, so good with different eye looks. If you have my, if you, if you and I share similar complexion, this is like one of those perfect pinky nudes that's not gonna look like chalk on our lips, okay? It matches the lip liner pretty darn well. Absolutely love the way that these look. I love the way that these wear. I just, you can't go wrong with his lip creams. You just, you just can't. And we're gonna finish it off with a little bit more setting spray, okay? We want this to last all day. Finished, done, ready for the day. So that completes today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I truly hope that you found it helpful, entertaining, whatever. I hope that you enjoyed hanging out with me today. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on future videos just like this one or future reviews that I have planned for you guys. And also don't forget to follow me over on Instagram where I love to interact with you all so much. As always, take care and I will see you all in my next video. Mwah. Bye.